The next email comes from Jeremy Friche from Edmonton, Canada. And Jeremy writes, Hi there, my wife was purchasing some facial cleansing products at a local drugstore. And while she was checking out, the saleswoman threw in some sample products for me. I'm a guy. She then told me that I shouldn't wash my face with soap, that the same scummy, scaly deposit left on the shower walls were being left on my face every time I wash with soap. And of course, the only way to prevent this from happening was to purchase expensive products specially formulated for male skin. Help me, skeptics. Is it true? Am I at risk of becoming a scaly crust face if I continue to wash my face with just soap? Uh... (laughs) <laughs> this is this is kind of a fun one. I mean, you, there, cosmetics is so ripe for marketing pseudoscience and and just made up claims that you know maybe you know have a little bit of uh, a, a kernel of leg- of plausibility, but are just really designed to scare people into buying your expensive you know their expensive products. I don't. I could not find any legitimacy to this claim at all, and it actually doesn't. It runs counter to my understanding of how soap works. I mean, essentially what soap is, it's a long molecule and at one end is a uh, a, hydro, so a so-called hydrophobic end, a, hy- a hydrophobic group, meaning that it does not like water, and, but it will cling to dirt and oil and things like that. And at the other end is a hydrophilic uh, component, so that will bind with water, um, or at least will it'll, it'll, it's friendly to water, right? So the uh, the 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 oil and dirt loving end will will bind up the oil and dirt on your skin, and then when you rinse it, the water will grab onto the hydrophilic end and wash it away. That's how. That's why soap is soap. That's why it works. Um, so it's designed to be washed away with water. That's what it does. It doesn't stick Surprise. to your skin. If you if you're developing stuff on the shower walls, it's because you're not washing it down thoroughly. Or a lot of that is just minerals from the water. It's just mineralization. From, from hard water. It has nothing to do with the soap itself. If you actually rinse off your skin, you'll be getting all the soap away. Plus, you now, know, the other obvious thing is that 99% of the population isn't walking around with giant soap that's flakes right. hanging off their face. <laughs> or looking like, right, or looking like the inside of a dirty shower stall. <laughs> <laughs> the solution to this problem is not to change your soap, but to start making shower doors out of human skin. <laughs> there you go. But maybe the point is don't go cosmetic shopping with your wife. Yeah, I kind of have or a that. don't ask, don't tell policy with my wife. Um, I've sort of given up trying to keep her from buying expensive cosmetic products a long time ago. Really? Sounds like we need a little intervention. Wait, Steve, but don't say that there isn't a quality difference between some cosmetic products and... There, Jay, there isn't a quality difference between some cosmetic products. You know what? There really isn't... Speaking as a skeptical mm. female, what about moisturizers? Really not that big. Of a Jay, I mean, the, 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 all right. Think about it this way, and you have this applies to cleansers and pretty much anything. How many molecules are out there, right? How many agents? Six, uh, seven, four stuff and a half. that does stuff, right? I mean, yeah. stuff chemists, that does stuff. chemists pretty much know the the the, the space of chemistry that's out there. Yeah. Um, actually, coming up with a novel molecule that has some really you know, again, to new or superior qualities to it yeah. would be a huge breakthrough. Cleansing agents all have the same basic kinds of stuff in there, and then they, they're just messing around with the filler, the dye, the color, the scent. Either there's some kind of bleach in there, or there's some kind of, you know, acidic, you know, compound in there, or whatever. And with cleaners, it's the same thing. There's either some kind of moisturizer in there, or there's some kind of astringent, or there is some kind of a soap. And that's it. You know, there's, there's everything else is BS. It's just marketing. If you go to uh, if you go to Skeptic, we had a discussion about this exact thing just last week. Um, my good friend and, and Skeptic writer Tracy um, was posting about how she just bought a really expensive moisturizer and loves it, and it's doing wonders. And uh, eventually, figured out that it's because the stuff costs so much that she has to use it every day or she worries that she wasted it as opposed to the cheap stuff she could get at the drugstore that mm-hmm. she just kind of lets sit there and doesn't really use. Um, and the comments that followed that post were really interesting because a lot of people with some um, some knowledge on the subject chimed in with uh, exactly what ingredients are in moisturizers and uh, how you can get the best value for the money. Right. So. Well, let me ask you guys a bunch of, of questions that... 
the average person probably doesn't have the answer to. Like one, can't there be other other things or chemicals or whatever in in a moisturizer that would work better or that would help your skin in a different way? I mean, because I mean, well, I know this actual di- improved technology. Yeah, I mean, you know, my my point is that that's actually few and far between, and that's rare. Those kind of innovations in the industry. The thing is, Jay, if 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 that cropped up, everyone would just copy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's the claim of one product, one brand, that having uh, having actual superiority in the, in its function? You know, maybe if there's more expensive ingredients in there, that might justify a greater expense. Or if the manufacturing process is more sophisticated, you know, so there may be a little bit of a difference as far as that's concerned. Um, there may be less filler or whatever. There may be actual more a- active stuff in there. So there may be some basic manufacturing quality, but not enough to justify the difference between you know a couple of dollars for a basic product at a pharmacy and hundreds of dollars yeah. for some high-end brand name stuff at the boutique. I mean, that there's nothing to justify that kind of differential. Let me throw in a, a really silly anecdote real quick. I remember, uh, it was probably like 10, 15 years ago, watching TV in Irish Spring, this commercial would come on and they kept saying, you know, leaves no residue behind and your skin is really smooth and all this stuff. And I remember I was vacationing and I was at a friend's house and they had Irish Spring and I used it in the shower. And I I remember running my hand over my forearm and going, wow, it's 100% opposite. My my hand was having a hard time rubbing my own skin because it was like sticking to my skin. I'm like, so that soap sucks in my opinion. But the soap that I use, I like. There is a difference. What do you use, Dove? So there is a difference. Yeah, but not in the soap. Again, again, the soap technology has been around for a long time. It's basically the same thing. It's that long molecule, hydrophobic, hydrophilic. That's it. Everything else is filler, scent, the milling, the manufacturing, but you know, not. Any, not actual different chemical technology. Let me let me let me read to you from uh, the from Tracy's blog entry. Uh, one of the commenters, because this is interesting, uh, he says most facial creams consist of salicylic acid, glycolic acid, alcohol, a jelly agent, a fragrance, and a bunch of almost completely useless for the purpose of skincare things. Mm-hmm. Salicylic and glycolic acid are the key ingredients. Salicylic opens pores, and glycolic acid eats away at dead skin. Dermatologists use a high concentration of glycolic acid to perform a chemical peel. Knowing that you, knowing that you could just go to any pharmacy, buy a two percent salicylic acid solution and a ten percent glycolic acid solution, and use them to get the exact same effect as your expensive cream for a fraction of the price. That was from Jack on the Skeptic blog. So okay, that you know that makes sense, Steve. I, so to summarize. The quality difference boils down to the other stuff, not the actual soap ingredient and not the actual... Not the active ingredients. Yeah. Right. So, and, and that's really what matters the most. 